Long enough to cover the subject and short enough to keep it interesting. Welcome to Outta My League. I'm Nick Diaz. Mark Twain once said, If you find yourself on the side of the majority, it's time to pause and reflect. So I read and listened to a columnist I trust very dearly named Scott Rabelais of the Baton Rouge Advocate. And on Friday, I heard him and my favorite radio personality in Baton Rouge, Charles Hanegraaff, on ESPN Radio. They talked about the column that Scott Rabelais was going to release on Saturday night. And the conversation was started by how the national media members were just not understanding why Kim Mulkey would ever leave the dynasty she built at Baylor for that dirty, rotten place called LSU in that shithole state of Louisiana. The conversation then turned into a whole list of occasions where the national media has used LSU as a double standard. From Kim Mulkey just wanting to come home to Kim Mulkey's comments about COVID being the same as Gino Oriema's comments about COVID, but nobody seems to have a problem with him. To making fun of Ed Ogeron's voice, the new football facilities with the sleeping pods, the Will Wade situation, on and on and on. Hannah Griff and Scott Rabelais both agreed, though, yeah, we've made our mistakes and we have our problems down here. But Hannah Griff brilliantly put it like this. It's the you can't have nice things crowd. You know, but we're smart. We're good at sports. We're good at business. A lot of us went to school. Bleep you. He didn't really want to say bleep you, but he's on radio, so I feel you. And listening to both of them on Friday afternoon, as a fellow LSU alumnus myself, I couldn't help but agree with them because I too am sick and tired of this bullshit. My emotions were filled with rage and still are every time these Northeast and West Coast elites and the media keep on saying, how dare you, LSU? How dare you not know your place? But then I realized something. I realized I found myself on the side of the majority. And I thought back to that quote and said, okay, Mark Twain, if that is your real name, let's see if this works. And as I started to think, I realized I never want to be something I hate. And some of the people I hate the most in this world are people who say the following, they just said that because I'm a woman. Or, I bet if he wasn't gay, he would have made the team. See, these kinds of people who say this crap, they have no critical thinking skills. So, for example, when NBA point guard Chris Paul criticized a blown call, like most NBA players do, uh, it was pretty well called for. Uh, except this time, the referee, she had a vagina. <gasps> now, everyone started to say, well, he just didn't like the call because she's a woman. Or, maybe... She just sucks at her job. I never thought about that. Or how about when uh, Michael Sam, the, uh, the Missouri player who came out as homosexual, and he got drafted in the seventh round of the NFL draft. Well, that's just because he was gay. Or maybe he was projected as a seventh rounder before he told anyone he was gay. You know, if you understand the full context of things, then the truth will come out. Um... Sir, this is social media. Your logic is no good here. All right, okay. But when it comes to LSU, Ed Ogeron, Kim Mulkey, or Will Wade, some of the complaints from LSU fans like myself do hold merit. I mean, look, all the football facilities that have been upgraded in the past five years, you know, Clemson got their players a slide and a pool table. And everyone goes, oh, how nice. LSU gives their players sleeping pods to rest their weary bodies. And everyone goes, how dare you? And for a decade, I heard LSU female student athletes complaining, y'all don't spend enough money on women's sports. And then LSU goes out and pays a women's coach big time money. And then everyone says, how dare you spend so much money on coach and not academics? See, Michael Wilbon, on Pardon the Interruption, was, for no good reason, assuming that Kim Mulkey left Baylor because she was getting revolted by her players because she was conservative. 
which makes no sense because her players are leaving Baylor to follow her at LSU, so he's an idiot. And the people at ESPN, all of them, a network that is so racially sensitive, yet they take a large dump on Ed Ogeron's voice, his accent, his culture, every time they bend over and squat. And despite the tweets and emails that ESPN receives from actual Cajun people, every time it happens, nobody cares. Because ESPN knows that doesn't affect their bottom line. Hell, I did a podcast a couple weeks ago called The Witch Hunt for Ed Ogeron. You can go listen to it by clicking on the right corner right there. Okay, having said all of that, I'm going to say some things that will get me in trouble, but I think I hit that iceberg a while back, so screw it. I don't want to be that tribal, angry fan that says, oh, they're just doing that because they think we're all a bunch of dumb Cajuns. Because if I do that, then I turn into the very people I hate. So in order to avoid that, let's even out the playing field. There are some good reasons as to why the media has its view of LSU and their coaches, While it's true Kim Mulkey did want to come home and some people in the media just can't fathom why you would ever want him to do that, at the same time, had LSU offered her less money than she was making at Baylor, do you really think she would have taken the LSU job? I mean, come on. And look, and all the people in the media who don't like Kim Mulkey, maybe it's not because she's a Southern woman and she's outspoken. Maybe it's also because when the Baylor administration covered up rape and sexual assault on campus, she did say some pretty controversial things about it all that you can go look up. So, you know, there's a track record here. And to all the people who say, oh, people don't like Ed Ogeron because they didn't think he should have gotten the LSU job just because he's dumb in the way he talks. Or maybe... It's because his record at Ole Miss was 10 and 25. 10 and 25. That's kind of fucking horrible. And look, I supported Ed Ogeron getting the job from the very beginning, and I was right. But when I heard people say that he shouldn't get the job, I didn't get mad at them. 10 and 25. This shit ain't Vanderbilt. He was at Ole Miss. But look, Will Wade is without question my favorite coach at LSU. Without question. And the five-star recruit Efton Reed committing to LSU on Sunday, I was laughing and tweeting at Kentucky beat writers and Dick Vitale when it happened, and I just just basked in the glory. But when LSU fans keep saying everyone is just picking on Will Wade because he's not one of them, oh, the establishment, they just don't want LSU to succeed, eh, I mean... He did get caught on wiretap saying he was trying to pay Javante smart. I mean, Dick Vitale is biased and he's abused his platform in unnecessary ways many times. But come on, people. At the same time, if that was Nick Saban getting caught on a wiretap or any other SEC coach that you don't like getting caught on a wiretap saying verbatim the things that Will Wade said on that wiretap, you know damn sure you'd be acting like all those other fans across the country that act that way towards Will Wade. But because it's your school, eh, picking on me. But there's still no actual proof Will Wade paid anybody. So, boot up, bitch. And the homepage of Pardon the Interruption, this one just kind of tickled me. I had to add this in. The homepage of Pardon the Interruption's podcast read this. Kim Mulkey leaving Baylor for OSU. OSU? These people hate us so much that they can't even get our name right. And then I realized, when I looked down on the keyboard, and I saw the O is right above the L on the keyboard. And I thought to myself, fat fingers. I can't judge somebody for having fat fingers. I mean, just the other day, I mistyped TJ Finley's name on one of my episodes, and I got called a terrible person. It's just two letters. It it wasn't, it was autocorrect. It's got a mind of its own. I can't stop it. It's not my fault. Look, all right, in all seriousness, though, LSU did screw up the sexual assault stuff, all right? And an LSU booster, John Paul Funes, was stealing money 
from Our Lady of the Lake Cancer Research and paying the parents of football recruits. So quit acting like the world is always out to get you. Because a lot of times in life, you make your own bed. And holy shit, did those sheets needed to be cleaned. I am the first person who will sit and tell you how much I despise the national sports media for a variety of reasons. Their laziness, their hypocrisy, their snobby elitism, the enormous round tables on their debate shows like they're trying to hold counsel for the fellowship of the ring. We know what you're doing. D don't always assume that everyone hates LSU because they think we're a bunch of dumb Cajuns, which would be stupid on their part because less than 1% of Baton Rouge's population is actually Cajun. But I digress. Don't always assume the world is out to get you. Because if you do that, then you become just like those people in the national media. You become just like them. And in the uncensored words of Charles Hanegriff, fuck those people. Thanks for listening to Out of My League. If you like what you heard, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or follow me on Twitter and Facebook in the description link below.